Eventually, we managed to get through the transfer window, signing plenty of players to create the strongest USMP team we've had so far in Vamos to the top. Sadly, not all of them could join in time for the qualifying rounds of the Copa Libertadores. Unfortunately, we did get just about knocked out by Montevideo City in the first qualifying round. They went on to actually qualify for the group stage. And if we had got past that, I would have backed us to get to the group stage of the Copa Libertadores. Sadly, it wasn't to be. But it does present a big opportunity. With no content of football to focus on this season, we've got a great chance of actually focusing on the league and getting ourselves to number one. Let's see if we can do it. Hello and welcome back to Vamos to the Top. Hope you're all doing well and looking forward to today's episode as we take on new boys to the league, Bolognese, which I think is probably how you don't say it, but it looks like that to me, so I'm going to say it. And then following that, we have Cantalau, a team that seemed to steal a few players from us over pre-season, and we've actually sent one of our players there on loan at the very end of the transfer window. So good to have you back. Glad you're here. Make sure you drop a like on the video for me and subscribe if you are new to the channel. Leave a comment down below telling me how you think we're going to get on this season. First of all, let's just refresh our minds of the players that we ended up signing in the transfer window. And actually, it's quite a lot. Um, actually, it might be easier to look at players who left first. Uh, all these players we knew were going to leave because they weren't really that great for us. In the end, James Fothering-Guiez, which I've butchered massively, he's gone out on loan to Cantalau this season to be an important player and hope to develop quite nicely on the right-hand side of the pitch. But to refresh your mind, we brought in a striker in Brennan Naranjo, who scored 26 goals in Australia last season. We brought in a backup left-back in Kevin Moreno. Peruvian looks pretty decent. And our new main striker this season, Vinicius Popo, is looking pretty dangerous already, I must say. We then brought in, finally, Carlos Caballero, the right-back who we signed a couple of seasons ago. And eventually, he's got back to the team um, after being on loan at other clubs and contract negotiations and disputes. Eventually, he's here. He's our first-choice right-back, and he's probably the best right-back that we've had in in this entire series. New goalkeeper Juan Diego Castillo is looking very good so far. I'm impressed with what we've done with bringing him in. And then we've also brought in a Brazilian in Lucao Cavalcanti, which is an interesting surname. He's only coming up as Lucao, so actually I might nickname the Cavalcanti for the memories of the uh, Aberdeen save. But he's a good left-footed centre-back for us, which is great. We also brought in on loan another centre-back who I don't think we're going to see for the entirety of the season on the grounds that is not that good. It was just kind of an emergency loan in case we couldn't bring anyone else in. But then we did bring other people in. Starting off with two centre mids. Uh, Wesley Soros, a Brazilian centre mid, in on a free transfer before splashing £70,000 on Claudio Torrenjon, which I think I've said wrong as well, but we'll work out how to say it properly at some point this season. He comes in to be arguably our best centre midfielder at the club, so excited to see what he does this season. And then we've also brought in two youngsters to improve the team. Juan Alvarado is a centre mid who's got a very decent first touch and decent passing tackling technique. Like I'm excited to see what this guy can develop into as we progress through the seasons. And then we've also brought in Artiga who is a left footed centre back as well. Uh, these two are for big money as well in the future so uh, hopefully they work out nicely. So overall I do think it was a very good transfer window and things are looking pretty good for us so far because in the three league games that we've played in between episodes we've won two and drawn one starting off with a big 3-1 win against Binacional. Vinicius Popo got his first goal in the league for us, which is absolutely fantastic as he scores this one here in a game where really, actually, to be fair, Binacional should have got something out of it. Look at the match stats. In a game which we dominated against Cusco in the 89th minute, we went... 3-2 up in this game, which was absolutely fantastic. We thought we snatched the win at the end. But in the 95th minute, Cusco's Bertie scored his hat-trick, which was so frustrating. It's also a really good goal. But against Ayacucho, we got back to winning ways and got an important clean sheet as well as Naranjo scored his second goal for the club in the league, I think third overall. So temporarily, that puts us second in our group, which is fantastic. Very excited about that. If we win it, we get to play the winner of Group A in a playoff final, and the winner of that gets to go in the Champions Playoff at the end of the season. So a big incentive for us to do well in the first stage of the season. First game today is against a newly promoted side, so hopefully we are going to be absolutely thrashing them here today. Uh, Castillo, the new keeper, is starting in goal with Ruan, Lucao, Sanchez, and Caballero in the back line. Torrejon and Tuesta start in the centre of midfield with Chelly and Carpio on the 
wings, Naranjo and Vinicius Popo lead the line. So as kickoff is upon us today, hopefully we're going to get another three points on the board here today. That would be absolutely fantastic as uh, Carpio gets the ball out wide. Probably the weakest player in terms of average ratings in our attack so far. I do want to play him more because I do believe he's got more potential than Sandoval and we paid a lot of money for him as well. But Sandoval keeps performing, and so maybe he's the man that just needs to keep playing on that right-hand side. Although Carpio is now through and scores a goal to prove me wrong. First of the season for him and the opener in this game. Maybe it's just going to take him a few games to get going this season as uh, Vinicius Popo shot. Oh, hits the keeper off the crossbar, cleared out from the back. That was a great chance for us there as Caballero clears that one up at right back and uh, the highlight does finish. But it does start once again with an attacking set pieces. Carpio puts the ball to the far post. Chelly's there, heads it over the bar, but some really nice attacking play so far today. Ah, also we have tweaked this formation just a little bit. Uh, a lot of you guys in the comment section have been telling me not to counter press, so I've taken that off. We are no longer counter pressing, but I have instructed our players to run up the defence a little bit more, I think. I might have done that. I might not have done that. We've got some good dribblers in the team. I have definitely added on work the ball into the box though. That's something we didn't have on before. So a few little tactical tweaks that may be just going to help us score a few more goals this season and maybe actually just help us keep our shape a little better in defence to stop conceding goals. Um, I've not put regroup on but that's something that we maybe could look to do, look to regroup when we do lose possession uh, rather than counter press. I've left it as like nothing right now to sort of see how it goes for a few games or so. And right now, it seems to be working as finally a ball put across to Chelly, who finally gets one in the back of the net. It's finally worked. Also, what we've got here to actually get the league table up for a change, wouldn't it? You can see here that uh, with the results going in our way right now, we're still second. Cusco are also winning. Cusco just seems to be so, so good in this. In real life, the relegation battle was between Cusco and USMP, and Cusco got relegated. In game, it appears to be that USMP and Cusco fight for the top as Naranjo, the big target man, gets another goal this season. You love to see it. 3 0 inside of 38 minutes. Fantastic work here. Absolute demolition job from us, although they are a newly promoted team, of course, so you know, to be expected, maybe. We are level on goal difference with Cusco now, so if we score a few more in this game, that would be really good for us to potentially go ahead of them in the table. But I'm liking what I'm seeing. We've not seen any highlights in the favour of Bolognesi so far, have we? Which suggests that our defence is working better than it used to, potentially, which is quite nice. Uh, with 20 minutes or so to go, though, we will make a couple of changes out there. Uh, Twester looking quite tired, so let's bring Gabriel Delgado on in that CM attack role. Also seeing a few poor performances at the back. Ruan not playing brilliantly. Let's give Kevin Moreno a go and see what he can do. Uh, also seeing Carlos Caballero looking quite tired. Let's bring Roch on at fullback to see how he can do. That's the one area where we are a bit weak this season. Um, we really could do with a better backup right back. Sebastian Roch is good, but I mean... If we get a big injury to Caballero, that's a really weak area for us. That's the one area that I think we've overlooked a little bit, a back at right back. That's something that we need to do. Also, looking a little tired up front is no... Uh, maybe Chelly. Let's bring Morelos on. So four subs there at the same time. That's quite a lot, to be fair. But hopefully, it's going to give us the energy we need to finish off this game as Naranjo waiting in the box was swapped by four players. Couldn't get there. Carpio, though, gets the ball back into Vinicius Popo, who scores his sixth of the season in all competitions so far. He's been an inspired signing. And with that goal, we should be going top of the table. There we go. You love to see it. Now, if uh, oh, you love to see it, Cusco conceding a goal as well. So we get a plus two goal different swing, which is quite nice. In fact, plus three, actually, because we were one behind before and now we're two ahead. So a plus three goal different swing there. A huge win. I'm going to outstretch my arms and tell them it was a great win. And now we've got a nice week off until we take on Cantalau, who are another team that haven't really started off very well this uh, season. Also, I was slagging off Carpio, saying he's not played that brilliantly so far. That game, three assists, one goal, 10 rating. I, I praise him. Congratulations, lad. That's what we need to see from him. Not quite, you know, as, as good as that. I can accept one assist a game or one goal, one assist a game. It doesn't have to be four goal contributions a game, but I need to see some better performances from him to ensure he is the undisputed champion 
champion, undisputed right winger ahead of Sandoval. Uh, you'll also notice as well that I've added a lot more of our youth players to the first team as well. Uh, they're all available to play for the reserves, but I did want to get them in here so they could be tutored by some older, better players to help with their development. So also a few more players added to the first team if it looks a little bit congested to what you thought it was last episode. One thing that does upset me though is that I keep getting told about the Copper Libertadores group stage. It's so upsetting. Um, Montevideo City, if you're interested, let's have a quick look, shall we, at Group H? Because I'm sure we are interested in this, aren't we? If I can actually find the groups, Group H, uh, you can see that Montevideo City have picked up a draw. It was against River Plate, I believe, but they've been terrible. Would we have done much better? I, I don't think so. Uh, they have just won 3 1 against Nacional, though, so, you know, that's pretty decent for them. Uh, would we have done much better? Probably not, but the prize money to get to that point would have been great. And of course, the uh, reputation we would have got for being there would have been great. But with the game coming up against uh, Cantalau right now, do I feel I need to change anyone in this team? I don't think so, you know. Unless anyone's got a serious injury, I don't think there's any need for me to change anything. And, and there isn't. So, team stays the same. Also, just realised we've had two clean sheets in a row as well. That's unheard of for us. Like, I, I genuinely cannot remember the last time we had two clean sheets in a row if we've ever had two clean sheets in a row. We, we're not used to them. So we've had two clean sheets in a row. That's something to be pretty happy with, I think. Hopefully we can get a third in a row as Carpio once again opens up the scoring. Suspicion of offside. And I, I might agree with it. I think he may have just strayed offside a little bit there. VAR says... Goal awarded. Okay, fine. That, that's fine by me. Was there someone at the far post playing him on side? So the ball got played over to Tuesta. Tuesta into Caballero. Caballero drives into the area. And actually, it was just a perfectly timed pass. Perfectly timed pass. How perfect was it? Can we get a, a lines replay, please? That'd be nice. So we'll see the lines right now. Cabe oh. Are we the blue line or the yellow line? I think we must be the yellow line because he's on the blue line there. I mean, that is inch perfect. Annoyingly, Cusco also winning three minutes into their game as well. It's going to be a real battle towards the end of this uh, group stage phase for uh, us and Cusco to win the title. I say title, it's not the title, is it? It's like the first opening phase of the season, isn't it? That's what it translates to, apparently, opening phase. So that's what we should probably call it. Um, but it, it feels like there's a lot to play for, which makes me want to say title and stuff like that. Like, it, it feels exciting to me as Naranjo on the ball turns to Caballero, who brings it down the right-hand side, already got one assist to his name. Can he grab another? As he looks for Naranjo, whose shot was blocked by the keeper. Good placement from him, out for a corner. Cantalau, though, are on the attack, and we only have the one goal lead so far. Luckily, the angle I'm, I'm going to say the angle was closed down perfectly by our new keeper. I'll give him the benefit of a doubt, though, because he didn't move at all, apart from towards the striker, who then put it way off target. So I'm going to presume he closed the angles down perfectly, but another chance for him now to show himself, and he does, actually, to be fair. The young Colombian 19-year-old is, is doing well for us. But if we could stop the shots coming in, that would be quite nice. And again, they're having a lot of success with a long ball, but luckily we intercepted there perfectly. Tuesta runs through into Popo. Can Popo get it back to him? Not quite. Ball in the middle towards the far post, cleared, but only as far as Caballero, who's got a very good cross on him. That's why we signed him. Actually, actually find Carpio, who found Tuesta, who scored. Carpio, one goal, one assist. It's what I said. You know... <sighs> speechless. Carpio really turning it on in today's episode. That's six goal contributions he's had now in the past two games. Superb from him. All of a sudden it's like Chelly. Chelly's now the man who's at risk in the attack. And to be fair, I am going to take him off in a second um, because one, he's not well, he's playing terrible, that's why. As he comes off for Danny Morelis, let's do that change. Is there anyone else that I want to see play? Yes, I want to see Juan Beltran on the pitch instead of Benicius Popo. I want to see what the young, is he 16 or 17? 18. What the young 18-year-old can do out there. He's got great finishing, great composure. I think the physicals maybe lack a little bit for him, but on paper, like he will be a very good striker for us. I really believe he'll be great. And he's just got his first goal, but I think he was quite a bit offside there. A great finish, nonetheless. You love to see it, Juan Beltran, but I, re I think he was about a yard or two offside, and the goal has been disallowed. You'll see it on the replay. Just quite how offside he really was here. So the ball comes in, it's flicked on, but yeah, you can see about two or three yards offside. Either way, I, I like to see it. It's what I like to see. I'm happy with that. If I can see him scoring goals, even if they are offside, it's it, it's good for me. What I might do as well is shout 
praise. I'll praise them out there as they've had a man sent off as well. Right, if we need, let's get three or four goals now, lads. You know, make it three or four nil in the final 10 minutes or so of this game. That would be quite nice. Let's go attacking. What? Let's go for it, lads. Come on. Please. A highlight. It would be lovely. They're down to 10 men, lads. We're on attacking. H how are there no highlights? Right, we'll take the win. But we'll also take a Cusco draw. I think they just conceded in the 85th, 89th minute, something like that. Cusco, 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 84th minute. 84th minute, UTC got an equaliser. That puts us two points clear of Cusco. Oh, that's tasty. Also, really good game there for Carlos Caballero. He's been really solid since joining the club. A 7.2 from his first five league appearances. Thank God that one worked out because that was a lot of money for a player that took a long time to arrive. Right, well, next episode, uh, I think we maybe skip Sport Juan Cayo off camera and then come back for these two games against UTC and a team that I really cannot pronounce. Bamba is the end of their name, though, so we'll call them Bamba. And then if we manage to win all of these games, we're through into the opening stage of the season at playoff final. And that would be mental. So that concludes today's episode. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Of course, if you have done, make sure you do drop a like on the video for me. Subscribe when you're around here and leave a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm. Until next time, have a lovely evening. I will speak to you all soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.